Hi and welcome back to Aesop's E Lessons. Today we'll be taking a look at the poem An African Elegy. This poem is written by Ben Okri, a Nigerian poet, so we will see his unique African perspective in this poem. If you find these videos helpful, please click subscribe so that you can get a notification as soon as I post a new one. If we look at the title, the first two words provide the setting, which is in Africa. The word elegy is a song to express mourning for the dead. The tone is usually sad and mournful, so we'll see if the content of this poem fits with its title. If we take a look at stanza 1, it starts off by saying we are the miracles that God made. So miracles refers to an act of God and in saying we are miracles, we see that this is a metaphor that compares the African people to miracles. It suggests that God has placed them on earth with a purpose. Line 2 hints at that purpose, it says to taste the bitter fruit of time. So we see another metaphor here where time is compared to a tree with bitter fruit and this suggests that Africans are chosen by God to endure suffering. The bitter fruit here represents suffering. Very interestingly, in line 2, we see that time is also personified. This is clear through the use of a capital letter. Personification in this case is to suggest its importance because time is necessary to experience life. In line 3, the word precious here means valuable. The poet uses this word purposefully to show a contrast between the colonial view of Africans and his view of Africans. And he says, and one day our suffering will turn to the, into the wonders of the earth. So it's very interesting to see the pronouns that the poet uses in this poem, because the words we and our include all African people. So line four and five suggest that with time, the suffering of African people will be rewarded. And we see that stanza one has a very optimistic tone. It suggests that the speaker has a belief in a better future. And this is in contrast with the title that said it would be an elegy, that there would be mourning and grief. From stanza one, we can gauge that this is a very introspective poem exploring the meaning of life and what it means to be African. If we take a look at stanza two, it says, there are things that burn me now. Once again, a metaphor. The suffering that the speaker endures is compared to a burn. This suggests that it inflicts pain and that it may leave scars. In line 7 we're told, which turn golden when I am happy. So this suggests that suffering gives you the strength to succeed. It is also a metaphor, it tells you suffering turns to riches, it suggests that hardship can make you stronger. The poet purposefully uses the word golden because this is a reference to Africa's mineral riches and it represents wealth. In line 8 he says, do you see the mystery of our pain? So this is a rhetorical question suggesting that the pain of the African people has a purpose that God has a plan for Africa, that suffering will teach them strength. Line 9 and 10 say that we bear poverty and are able to sing and dream sweet things. So this highlights a paradox, which is that the African people have hope for a life that they do not know, that they have never experienced. In stanza 3, it says, and we never curse the air when it is warm or the fruit when it tastes so good, or the lights that bounce gently on the waters. So we see this is a continuation from stanza two. It's also a rhetorical question here. And this rhetorical question shows that African people appreciate the beauty of nature and they do not take it for granted. It shows that they don't fixate on the bad. They try to see what they can learn from difficult circumstances and they focus on the positives. In line 14 and 15, we see it says, we bless things even in our pain, we bless them in silence. So th this suggests in Africa, faith helps people find meaning in their life. In line 14, we see the contrast between the word bless and pain. It shows that Africans are grateful despite their circumstances. And in line 15, it says we bless them in silence and silence shows a sign of respect. In stanza four, that is why our music is so sweet. Music is used for celebrations and Africans have reason to celebrate. In line 17, it makes the air remember. This is personification. We see that the air is personified as it is given the ability to remember. The poet goes on to say there are secret miracles at work that only time will bring forth. And once again, we see that time is personified. It is given the ability to bring something. This once again highlights the, the speaker's hope that Africa will thrive in the future. The last line of stanza four says, I too have heard the dead singing. This is an example of personification because the dead are given the ability to sing. This is a reference to the African belief of ancestors who can guide the living. In stanza five, it says, and they tell me. So the they here refers to the ancestors, uh, which in the previous stanza, the speaker says he heard singing. So they tell the speaker that life is good. So this is the ancestors reminding the speaker to be grateful. They tell me to live it gently. 
So they tell the speaker to live in moderation, with fire and always with hope. So they also remind the speaker to have passion and to always hold on to a belief in a better future. There is wonder here. The last line of stanza 5 is used to highlight the fact that Africa is filled with amazing phenomenon. It has the potential to be great. In stanza 6, it says, and here is surprise. Right, so there are unexpected things here. Africa has more to offer than people realize. In everything, the unseen moves. The unseen here represents God or a higher power, once again suggesting that there is a higher plan for Africa and its people, one that we may not understand. Line 28 says, the ocean is full of songs. This is a metaphor where the ocean is compared to a container of songs. It suggests that Africa's natural beauty hints at better things to come. Remember that songs represent celebration and joy. The sky is not an enemy. Here we see an example of personification. If it's not an enemy, then it is a friend. This suggests that heaven or God is an ally of the African people because the sky represents heaven. And line 30 says, destiny is our friend. It's once again personification. Destiny is personified as a friend, which also suggests that Africa can expect great things in the future. So we see that this elegy ends on a very triumphant note. So this elegy is not mournful, but rather it's quite reflective and thoughtful. It's not mourning the death of Africa, but rather promising rebirth, renewal, and a much brighter future. If we look at the imagery used in this poem, we see a lot of African mysticism. So this refers to the belief in the link between God, spirits, and man. We see that um, there's a lot of hints at a bigger plan for Africa, that God, that destiny, that heaven has a plan for Africa. And we also see um, lots of natural elements linked to Africa's riches to show that Africa is rich not only in its people, but also in nature, in its resources. The themes here are African identity, also hope for the future, hope of better things. Despite our pain, our poverty, the suffering that goes on in Africa, we should hold on to the hope that better things are coming. Another theme is destiny and trusting in a higher power. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to get notifications about when my next video is out.